Hey, welcome to the L. Russ Show. My name is L. Russ, and I am a number one best selling author and master coach. My intention is to inspire, educate, and motivate you with weekly content featuring amazing guests and solo episodes. Visit my website, lrust.com, to learn more about me, my courses, free master classes, partner discounts, and much more. Enjoy the show. Jessica Beaker, welcome to the show, Jess. Jess is a friend of mine. We've known each other a long time through Paleo Primal World and Keto and Thyroid. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. Jess is a registered nurse, an amazing one, has been doing it a long time, and she is also an amazing health coach, keto coach, Paleo Primal coach, overall, all around, get your shit together, coach. How are you? <laughs> hey, buddy. I'm great. Happy to be here. I'm glad we finally got it together so we could do one of these together. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you uh, where you want to start with this because you, um, I mean, your journey as most people become coaches and uh, maybe you want to talk yeah. about where you got into nursing, but you know, you've got some good stories about like experiences in nursing and what you've mm -hmm. seen with health suggestions. And then also you yourself are on T3 only. So I am. Um, yeah, Jess is a hypothyroid patient like myself. She had to go to T3 only. Um, and she also knows as a nurse that that information is just not fucking out there. You know, no. she works in a hospital and you cannot, Jess could probably not throw a dart and find any doctor that would understand what we do. So we've had a lot of conversations about that. But just given all of that, since there's a whole soup of stuff here. Yeah. Let's, let's start with like, why'd you, got, why'd you get into the health field? Your mom is a very famous, well-known researcher. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about your trajectory and how you got into nursing and then moving on to keto and thyroid. Nursing is actually my second degree. Um, I thought I was going to go to law school, got into law school, didn't go. I was clerking for lawyers at the time and I actually got my paralegal certificate and I realized this is so not fun helping people fight. Um, <laughs> and I developed kind of a passion for healthcare. Um, and my mom actually tried to talk me out of it because the climate and map of what healthcare really means, the nuts and bolts of being a provider right now is pretty not great for stress and all sorts of things. Um, so yeah, I went to nursing school and I have done pretty much every specialty you can pick out of a hat. <laughs> and I ended up leaving, I had a real passion for, for cardiac care. And I actually ended up leaving that specialty because I was awakening to my own health journey and things I was learning. And I realized the advice we were giving people on diet, on dietary fat, on cholesterol, um, were actually harmful and I couldn't participate anymore. So I went to, um, labor and delivery and thought that maybe, hey, in women's health, I wasn't going to feel this conflicted anymore. And the truth is, it's not true, especially when it comes to thyroid. <laughs> so. Thyroid. And tell us the story about the diabetic pregnant in the, 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 the menu that they gave to her. Oh, and it's like, you couldn't tell them day. like, yeah, can yeah you tell us this experience and what you go through, like what they passed to her and you looked at it and you know what I know. And you're like, Jesus, tell yeah. us about this. Yeah. So people with gestational diabetes go on consistent carb um, diets, which basically they try to keep the carbohydrates even for every meal, but that does not mean low carb in any way, shape or form. And my own ketogenic protocol that keeps me healthy. I have a very, very low threshold for inflammation with carbs. I stay 20 total grams per day. That's really um, low, by the way, for everyone that is really extremely low, low yeah. because we're, and I just want to throw that out there for people that aren't aware, like what 20 carbs could be a bunch yeah. of asparagus cooked is 20 carbs. Okay. Yeah. So Jess is not drinking any carbs, right? No. Absolutely That's not. Where, yeah. Like you wouldn't even take a look at a fucking green juice because that would be 27 carbs out of your day. Absolutely not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I so I you're extremely low nuts. carb. Yeah. I looked at some nuts the other day and a tiny one, like the little sleeves of nuts and it was 22 grams. I was like, Oh no, we're not doing that. So I'm low, but I also know that there's a spectrum there. And, um, I passed this girl, her tray and I happened to look just at the total carb count. And for just lunch, it was 54 grams of carbohydrates. And I'm thinking, what are we doing here? How is this helping prevent complications for mom and baby? It's not. The stuff on the tray comprising the 54 carbs wasn't a paleo meal full of fresh vegetables and healthy meat. It was uh, sugar-free jello. 
mm-hmm. and like half a sandwich on suspiciously white looking wheat bread and it just <laughs> none of that they're, they're not created equal and I'm gonna go on a tangent there if I'm not careful but like all carbs are not created equal and calories are a myth so you can't just hand someone a tray of 54 grams of carbs that look like that with a bunch of garbage on it and a pile of um, fruit from a tin and say that that same mom who maybe had a meal set before her at the same amount of carbs, which I, you know, wouldn't recommend, but that could be comprised of, like you said, a bunch of asparagus, some fresh fruit. (laughs) And it's not, that's not what we do. Right. And that's the conflict that you have because in that mm -hmm. moment, you can't say, Hey, side note, lady, don't follow the thing we just gave you from the hospital. (laughs) Yeah, except right? I can't. And I, I remember years ago, <laughs> my my dad was in the hospital. With, uh, my stepmom was there, and my dad was there. And my dad had learned how to go paleo because he had reached sort of type two. And he died. I sent him the paleo information. I sent him the primal blueprint. He went primal, got the shit under control. And so then he was like, you know, on fire about it. And he called me from the hospital and he goes, I can't believe this. I'm looking here and the hospital says low carb menu. Every single meal here is a hundred grams of carbohydrates. Uh... I mean, that. For everyone Jeez. out there who doesn't know, most of the listeners do who've been following me. But when we talk yeah. about paleo primal low carb in general, that's a metric are, fuck ton of carbs. It's a fuck ton of is. carbs because we're talking about no more than 120 to 150 per day total. And if you're at 150, you better be like a fucking athlete. And if you're me and you're five two and a woman, it's going to be a rare day to do 150. And so that's a, that's a day. So they're giving 100 carbs. They're giving a yeah. day's worth of carbs in yeah. one meal and call it a low carb menu. That is just a false mid false advertising. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that uh, the to get back on thyroid real quick, my other conflict is because I'm working with women and I, yes, I do deliveries. I do C-sections. I do the actual birth part, but my passion tends to be with antepartum patients, which are pregnant patients that are hospitalized, hopefully not to deliver their baby, um, but because there needs to be medical management of something going on that's either pregnancy related, like preeclampsia or, you know, premature rupture of membranes, which means the water broke early, or it's because you have a massive kidney infection or you have something going on medically with you that we need to manage. And I really love those patients because I am a pathophysiology nerd. I loved my sick patients. I loved getting them better. And this kind of marries my two specialties. And my antepartum patients sometimes are hypothyroid. And I will pass them their Synthroid in the morning. And they're poorly educated on how much time that should be in their stomach before they eat or drink anything, or that drinking something can mess that up. You know, don't put half and half in your coffee. (laughs) If you're going to drink it with your Synthroid, please. Um, And I look at their labs and I look at the fact that they're being called hypothyroid based on a TSH only. Yeah. In some cases. And sometimes there's a free T4 and sometimes it's a full thyroid panel. Obviously no reverse T3 because no one seems to understand that that's not something you just do on people that are dying of sepsis in the ICU. Um, right. oh, by the way, then just let's stop there because I talk about that uh, in general about how I had a client in Hawaii and I suggested a reverse T3. They said mm-hmm. my doctor refused. I said, push it. And I said, what they say? And the doctor came in back and was like, well, we only test that when you're in the ICU. Please tell us about why <laughs> someone would test reverse T3 in an ICU from your perspective and knowledge on reverse T3. Okay. I will try to keep it as simple as possible. But basically, um, if you're in ICU for something like a massive infection, which is sepsis, that's a great example. Um, your body is in the most inflammatory mode it can possibly be in. Um, it is so inflamed that you end up having a cascade of responses in your body where your body is trying to mitigate that damage. Uh, Reverse T3, as Elle can tell you, is often a sign of sometimes stress and inflammation because your body is poor at converting your pro-hormone, your T4, to your useful thyroid hormone, T3. And they look at that thyroid dysfunction as, I guess, a sign of multi-system organ issues I'm not super well versed in it. I have had critical care patients in my career. I've taken care of a lot of people that were super sick and I've never had a doctor order it. But whenever I've asked a physician about it, the answer was usually that it's used in 
uh, severely critically ill patients. So, yeah, and it can be a sign of like heart issues. It's a general marker of wellness and unwellness. And it is that emergency break, right? Of the body going, oh yeah. shit, this patient is fucked. And we got to dial this whole thing back because we don't want to pour more gasoline onto this inflammatory fire. And the gasoline would be T3. So we're going to dial it back and convert it into the inactive. And that's what's happening. And I'm assuming because it's again, seeing that danger. I think, yeah, it's ratcheting down the metabolic. If I had to like spitball, I would think that it's probably your body's attempt to ratchet down your metabolic need um, because your body is really smart. It puts energy into the, it triages, right? So it will put the most energy into the thing that needs it most. And a really good everyday example of that for someone who's not sick is you, everyone's heard of fight or flight or rest and digest. And your body will prioritize blood flow to your gut after you've eaten because that's what needs the blood flow. Um, And your body does that in sickness as well. And so maybe your body is attempting to decrease your metabolic need. But again, it's not something that I have had personal experience with. But what I have had personal experience with over and over is these half-assed thyroid panels that are either just a TSH (laughs) or TSH and T4. And what's really difficult for me is I have very close friends that are physicians. Elle knows this. One of my best friends is an excellent, excellent physician. But the conversations I've had with her, and she's willingly ordered these things for me with the caveat, I don't know how to treat this. And I do have a a holistic doctor, um, a naturopathic doctor that does dose my T3 for me. Um, but my friend will order these for me and say, I don't know what to do with this. Right. But then she won't go and like learn it. And so that was my next thing I was going to say. What's hard is I'm like, well, learn it then. And she goes, I'm not an endocrinologist. I said, no, you're not. However, as an OBGYN, you might be the only physician putting hands on people with uteruses for maybe 10 years at a time. You know, not everyone goes to the doctor. Not everyone gets their physicals. Not everyone Mm -hmm. does, you know, doesn't get gaslit by the, I don't feel well. I don't have a lot of energy. My skin's super dry. And some of the extra weird symptoms, which I had a lot of really weird thyroid symptoms that doctors are like, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, And I'm saying you're the only person that's putting hands on these patients, maybe for 10 years of their life. You need to be able to recognize these signals because women fall through the cracks horrifically when it comes to thyroid symptoms and we're gaslit ridiculously when it comes to thyroid symptoms, because physicians aren't taught correctly. I wasn't taught correctly. <laughs> I That's only right. know how I only know thyroid because of you, <laughs> you helped me. What, you helped like, why me. am I teaching a nurse? Like that sounds wrong, I right? Know, it does, it no, it does. And I, I always say that it's weird for me. Like, and I look, it's a very flattering when doctors email me and they're like, wow, you know more than me. And I tell everyone, you're great. And I'm like, thanks, but that shouldn't be the truth. It shouldn't. But you know what? If you are, if you are a competent provider or nurse, right. you'll the pathophysiology will make absolute sense to you immediately. And you're like, oh my God, yes. And the compartmentalization that we experience in modern medicine, we just look at symptoms or one system at a time. Thyroid is everything. It's all. It's, it sticks its toe in every That's right. organ system in your body, every metabolic function, your hormones, <laughs> your metabolism, your digestion, your iron levels, everything. It's not, nothing exists in a vacuum. And especially in women's health, I see things like low iron or low um, iron binding capacity uh, treated as, oh, you're someone who has periods. Let's fix that. Not what's causing it. <laughs> what's your diet like? You know, what other symptoms do you possibly have? We do not treat people holistically. And I don't mean that in a woo-woo way. I mean, like literally the definition of holistic. We do not treat patients holistically in modern medicine. It's not set up for that. It's nobody's fault. That's why there's functional medicine and there's exactly physicians. It's just, it's a business. It's a business on on the day-to-day level. And doctors have to see a certain amount of patients to, you know, keep the lights on in their offices. And I, it's hard, man, that oral, that moral injury that I experienced with critically ill patients is not gone because I really feel for women that have symptoms and go to their doctor and say, Hey, this doesn't feel right. And they go, well, your TSH was fine. And I say to a doctor, okay, so her pituitary works and (laughs) right. Yeah. Is she getting the package? Is she getting the hormones delivered into 
So, okay. So tell us your thyroid story. When did you Mm -hmm. start to go, huh? have issues. And then when did you realize you needed to go to T3 only? Cause you know, that's the choice and that's not always the first order of business. So give us your, your thyroid uh, trajectory there. Sure. So I became a nurse later in life. Um, I was in my early thirties when I started practicing and I felt like absolute crap. Now I've had energy balance issues my whole life. That's not new. Um, some of the otter symptoms that can be attributed to hypothyroid, um, like some of the orthostatic stuff where you get dizzy when you stand up too fast and the dry skin. I've had those my whole living memory. Um, but I started to feel really sluggish and put on weight really easily and not sleep well. And you know, my skin was extra dry. I had headaches all the time. I was feeling super unwell. I was already a nurse and I started digging around with what's wrong with me. What's wrong with my diet? Am I eating crap? Because I went to my PCP and said, Hey, I'd like just blood work. And of course they did a a TSH and a free T4 and said, you're cool. Cause that's not my problem. (laughs) And I went on with this for a long time, a long, long, long time, um, feeling like crap, trying everything, trying whole 30, um, which made me feel worse at first because my body was used to such high carbs. I was creating a stress as we know you really, if you have a thyroid problem, you shouldn't go really aggro with lowering your carbohydrates. You should do a step down step wise, uh, pattern for that because it's stress. It, it heightens cortisol. It makes thyroid function worse. And I didn't know any of this at the time. And I felt like crap. And my mom, who's also a nurse, uh, happened to have been diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And so my mom was self-educating a lot on thyroid because she was having similar experiences with physicians that she didn't really get the gut feeling that everything was really being looked at. And she herself had started going to a functional medicine specialist for her Hashis. And she read your book, uh, Paleo Thyroid Solution. And when she read the list of symptoms beyond what we're taught in school is hypothyroid, she called me at 1030 at night, which if you know my mom is crazy, (laughs) she's never awake that late and said, you have to read this book. You have to read this book right now. (laughs) And I downloaded it and I read it and I cried a little bit because I finally understood that I wasn't messing up. I wasn't defective. Uh, it wasn't a lack of willpower or 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 a lack of of self um, actualization that I wasn't able to keep up with a a hit routine right. or <laughs> CrossFit. My body wasn't functioning. So um, I thankfully knew my naturopathic doctor. Um, she is a friend of the family actually. And she was pretty new into practice. So she was open to what I had to say, which was amazing. So we had this incredible collaborative journey with starting me out on thyroid. And she was the first one to want me to get tested for reverse T3. And I do have this amazing physician, Bessie, who's like, I'll order whatever you want. I'm just not treating it. (laughs) So I got a reverse T3 and it was like, um, I think it was like 25 or 27. And at the time we were doing ratios, which we don't really do T3, reverse T3 ratios to diagnose anymore, but it was bad. And uh, I mean, I still always do it because they they still align. I mean, I do the ratio. I look at the number and I know Janie Botharp is like, we don't do the ratios anymore, but I'm like, yeah, but I still want to kind of see it. I don't know why. I mean, it just to me, I still do it for myself. I still do it, even though I know people don't, but I, I, why, what's the pain, you know, what's the hurt doing it both. But anyway, it's always fascinating. I mean, I think it tells you this is the fraction that you're using. This is the fraction Mm -hmm. that's going, going down the drain essentially of your converted thyroid hormones. So uh, we started with a T3, T4 combination and I wasn't getting any better. I really wasn't. Um, and my labs weren't getting any better. And at some point they actually started to get worse. And this was around the time L that you and I met um, online. We started talking. Um, I had a couple questions for you that you so graciously answered for me on DM and we hit it off and you and I started talking. And I remember one day we were having lunch. And I was telling you how bad I was feeling. And you said, here, give me your numbers. Give me everything. (laughs) Give me the whole thing. We looked at two years worth of thyroid numbers. 
And you said there's a book you have to read about T3 only replacement, read it now. And here's what you do. So um, I read the book you recommended and I was less Which is Recovering with T3 yes. by Paul Robinson. So Let's give him credit because that yes, guy, I couldn't fuck remember that book. That guy is like a, amazing. amazing that he wrote that book. Yeah. I couldn't remember the name of the book. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I read it and I said, okay, you know what? Physiologically, this makes sense. And I, you know, everyone in conventional medicine will tell you, oh my God, T3 only replacements dangerous. It causes tachycardia, um, blah, blah, blah. And you so graciously explained to me that if you do this in a logical stepwise way and you're responsible for what your heart rate is and what your temperature is and what your blood pressure is, and you're mindful, there's no way you're going to hurt yourself with this. And my naturopathic doctor was on board. And she, I mean, God bless her, prescribed me a metric fuck ton of T3 to play with. Um, she trusted me. And she said, look, I'm prescribing you like four times your monthly dose because you don't know where you're going to end up. Mm-hmm. And keep me posted and keep doing your laps and let's do it. And that was, oh gosh, L, that was like, what? two years ago, it's been two years on T3. Yeah, only. And we've talked a few times, there were adjustments, we had conversations yeah, because, just recently. Yeah. And, and I think what you, and this is what everyone needs to know. And I tried, you know, I just had a recent thyroid Q and A and I, I told, cause a lot of people are like, Oh, my reverse T3 is bad. Should I go on T3 only? And I'm always like, oh, wait a fucking minute. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Cause there are other solutions. And I think Jess and I would both say, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Listen, if you can be on a T4 or T3 combo of any kind, like that is better. It is easier. Oh, yeah. So Sustain- there's two- more sustainable. <laughs> yeah. More sustainable. There's a lot of tinkering. There's changes that come with T3. There's some people that stay on the same dose forever, but a lot of times it is a tinker operation. And be- yeah. so, you know, uh, anyway, so it's a moving target. It's a lot right. like Hashimoto's in that sense. It's a moving target and your stress level, your, as, as Elle knows, I had a very stressful year last year and things changed. You know, I had to adjust and maybe it's temporary and we don't know yet, but yes, it's a moving target. And I feel like hypothyroid, the term is such an umbrella term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a lot like autism spectrum disorder. Um, it, it, covers so many different things. And I am the lucky owner of a very rare problem, which I make plenty of TSH. I make plenty of free T4. My body absolutely sucks at converting it to useful thyroid hormone, just sucks at it. And so that is why T3 only was the only replacement that was helping me is because yeah, I just wanna, my body just needed it. <laughs> Yeah. And just, you know, I've I've said, I know, you know this, but just for people listening, the reason T3 only is the option for people that cannot convert T4 to T3 is because T4 is the only thing that converts into reverse Mm T3, the inactive. So if you get rid of that, you take the direct shit and the direct stuff T3 does not convert into reverse T3, which means you can get out of reverse T3 situation, reverse T3 hypothyroidism, and finally get better, which is why Jess and I, I mean, I take a tiny bit of T4 in the morning, 12.5 yeah. micrograms, but the rest of my day is overwhelmed by T3. And that's new in the past year, year and a half. Um, but for many, many years, I was on T3 only, and I still make adjustments in my afternoon dose. What mm-hmm. are you now? I know your doses changed over the years, and obviously this is all individual. But are you do you take three doses a day? For what, how many doses a day do you take? So my biggest barrier, my my biggest hurdle with my T three only, and some people may not have this problem, but because of what I do for a living and the mm-hmm. fact I need to take my T three on an empty stomach, I have a lot of finagling I have to do. Um, to try to get three doses in a day. And I've found it's very hard. The, um, the T3 that is sourced by my pharmacy does not dissolve well under your tongue sublingually, which is a great option. If you still have eaten something and you want to get the hormone on board. Hey, have you tried, have you tried, um, uh, shit, hold on. There's a, a, there's a generic T3 that dissolves really well. Yeah. I, I tried to get it. And it's, it's an insurance issue with like the CVS I go to or because something. Because it's weird because like, the, yeah, because some CVSs will, or will, like one CVS was like, we don't do that. And I was like, well, that's funny because yeah. the fucking CVS down the street does. So what the <laughs> hell? Yeah. Um, mine was downright hostile about it. 
but so my barrier is the empty stomach thing. So I, on a work day, I get up at five 30 in the morning to get ready for work. Um, I immediately take like my 15 mics of T3. Um, lately I've been tooling around with 20. Um, but that's in the last week. So I'm not prepared to like say if there's any change there, but uh, I take my 15 mics in the morning. I try to dose my second 15 mics, um, within like six hours. So at work, what that looks like is I get to work. I round on my patients. I get my day going when I'm able to get a morning break. I go eat some protein and some fat, um, get some breakfast on board and make sure that I'm not going to lunch within two hours of that. Mm -hmm. So, which is really hard in nursing. You go, when you get a break, (laughs) you go when you're told we can cover you. Right. Um, Someone's in the middle of a delivery. It's not like you'd be like, oh, time's out. Yeah. Or yeah, I got to go to the OR and I'm going to be in there for two hours, you know, or in a recovery for two hours. So, you know, I can't count if I'm being transparent, the number of times my alarm on my phone has gone off for my second dose. And I am not getting to that anytime soon at work. I can't count it at home. I have a lot of control and I only work three days a week because that's the blessing of nursing, which my body would fall apart if it were more than three, but, um, it's hard at work. And and if you have a job that's similar where you can't necessarily have control over your meal times or your break times or the ability to step away and take a sip of water, then that's something to consider. But I really do try to get that second dose within like that six hour window. Mm -hmm. And Elle and I have been talking a lot about a bedtime dose. Um, And that's the hard one because on a work day, I don't get home from work until I report off at 7.30. I'm not home until just before 8 p.m. And I got to eat dinner. Yeah, and then you're so, up. You're up yeah, you know? and I got to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> so so if I'm rinse and repeat, I try to get to bed by like 9, 9.30. So I get a good eight hours of sleep. My body requires a lot of sleep. Some people's does not, mine does. Um, And it's a real barrier at night. So I've been on like two doses a day for most of that two years. That third dose doesn't usually happen. Um, and I don't really notice a difference without it, but I do think that, you know, the conversation you and I had oh, about making some adjustments right now, I think that that's not even dialed in at the moment. Mm-hmm. Like my two day time doses aren't optimal. Um, and so I'm going to start this week next time I have a little stretch off and I can really get like a basal temperature at the exact same time every morning and not have it chaotic and be different times. Um, and I can do a blood pressure at a specific time when I am home and able to have governance over myself. Um, I'm going to start this experiment and see how high it needs to go. Uh, One thing that scared everybody is I have had a heart problem that I is familial. It's inherited. I'm born with it. It's an electrical conduction problem in my heart. It was not caused by my thyroid. It was not influenced by my thyroid. I had a procedure to get rid of it. It's gone. But when you have the diagnosis of supraventricular tachycardia, SVT, um, and you're on T3 only, and you have an uninformed doctor, you have panic. <laughs> well, right. Because they, they think it's going to be bad for the heart, right? Yes. Like, or that's you, what caused it. Right. Or your heart. Favorite. Needs it. Yeah. Same thing with CJ Hunt. You know, he's 70 now he's mm-hmm. on 150 micrograms of T3 a day. Cause that's what he needs for him. And he mm-hmm. had a heart thing. Cause he, he had a, he, he dropped dead on a racetrack at the age of like yeah. 20. You know, and so yeah, he had that whole thing too. They're like, oh, we're afraid, we're afraid. And then the other thing too is and and gratefully you got that procedure because then you're not able to assess heart rate, maybe, right? Is that is that, was that probably uh, one of the no, issues with having that? Like, or if it was racing, you're like, is this my heart thing or is it the T3? Or oh like- no, it was so the great the great that thing about SVT is the diagnostic criteria is a is a heart rate sustained over 150 without exercising that's really high you're not going to get that it's almost like a hyperthyroidism type of yeah i mean i know that's not it but i'm just saying no but it's 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 but it's an electrical misfire and it was hitting like the mid 200s before i got the procedure that's kind of what after covid thanks covid um i ended up getting worse and so i'm glad i had the procedure but what cracked me up is when i met with the electrophysiologist which is the type of heart doctor that does these procedures um i was terrified of when he was going down my med list to have this argument right i was right. bracing myself i was like i had my loins girded and he goes leothyroidine 
Is that for your thyroid? Yeah. Okay. He didn't even know what T3 was. He didn't yeah, know right. what he was, he was like, looking oh, at. Whatever. Yeah. It, it got skipped right over. No big deal under the radar. And um, yeah. So now when I coach folks who are being actively medically managed for something, which are, again, my favorite people, just like my antepartum patients. If you have a chronic illness, you have an autoimmune disorder, you're dealing with thyroid. I love you. You're my people. Uh, Cause we can make it better. Um, the conversations I, I try to teach them how to have those conversations respectfully, which I got to give a shout out to Dr. Ken Barry. Dr. Barry mm -hmm. has done so much education on having respectful conversations with your clinician um, and getting what you need from those conversations. And I try to pass that on. I send, you know, a specific video to my clients sometimes, Hey, you're going to have this conversation with your doctor. Here's a great roadmap on how to have that conversation respectfully. And um, that's, that's a lot of my, that's a lot of my coaching because again, yeah. they're, because we don't prescribe, they're going, we're, we're instructing them. Like, how do you appeal to ego? If you've got a yeah. horrible ego, you know, so when I'll usually yeah. I'll be like, let me tell you what should be said. And I'll say it in the way I want to say it. And they'll be like, all right, great. You're not going to yeah. say it that way to your doctor. This yeah. is how we're going to dress yeah. it up. We're going to preface this motherfucker. We're going to, we're yes. going to throw in a compliment. We're going to, you know what I mean? We're going to wrap it up. Yeah, because medicine that is, is a, a delicate lot. thing. Yeah. It's it lot. is. It is. And, and I it doesn't even, always I work mean, no matter how respect you feel you are. It sometimes doesn't oh, work and the doctor's and just a piece of shit. And, whatever. and that might mean the doctor's not for you, which is what Dr. Barry likes to tell people. Like if you uh, like quick, quick side note, and one of my best friends is, is getting worked up for, um, some cardiac issues that he's had. And we're both in our early forties. And I uh, recoiled at the advice he was being given by this cardiologist. And my best friend's reaction was, but he's so highly recommended. I said, that doesn't mean he's the doctor for you or for what's going on with you. It's, it's not a dig at him. It's, it's just, that's not right for that. And he is not where he needs to be in his evolution as, as a clinician. He, he could be a great guy. He could be the top of his a field in certain things, but I can speak to as a nurse, when you specialize, you get myopic. Your world gets very narrow. It has to. We have so much in our brains. There is so much duty of care in, you know, a healthcare provider's brain. You get, you get myopic, you get real tunnel vision. And so it was a conversation I had had with him that he needed to have a conversation to judge if this guy would work with him. Or if it was, hey, bestie, come on over. Let's find you another cardiologist. What? Uh, let's talk about. Um, okay, the, when you finally started to get on T three only, and mm -hmm. you're and mm -hmm. you're going up, and you, tell us like what were the things you were feeling, brain, body, like that you were like, oh yeah. my god, uh, hi, my answer, it's working. Holy shit! You know, there's always that. Yeah. Moment. Like, what, what were those feelings? Let's talk about like when you're like, oh my god. You know? <laughs> do you, do you, do you remember that text? Um, yeah, I remember a few of those conversations. <laughs> I remember I I've had, so part of my story that I hadn't gotten to yet when they were working me up for everything with my naturopathic doctor, one of the things we found out is that I'm Epstein bar positive, which means that you know, a lot of my fatigue could not be thyroid related. It could be chronic fatigue syndrome. So I've fought fatigue for longer than I can remember. I don't have a lot of energy. Um, and I remember running errands in the heat in the summer, which for me is hell. I have no heat tolerance as, as a thyroid. Anyways, patient. It could be like 105 here just so we're talking about. So she's talking probably about yeah, a yeah, yeah. five degree day. Yeah. <laughs> super hot. Um, and you know, it would make me absolutely miserable. It would drain the life out of me. And I remember running errands, coming home and then starting something else. And then something mundane. I think I was putting away like dishes and going, Oh my God, I didn't have to lay down when I came home. Mm. Oh my God. Is, is this what normal feels like? Is, yeah. is this what people get through a day? It was, it was so, and again, there were some tears there because you mourn all the years yes. that you didn't realize what your body could do if optimized. And that's painful for people. That is such and a I, good I, point. And I, I want to, I want to just, I want to hone in on that even more because yeah. when you felt like shit for so long, it becomes normal. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people start to feel a little bit better if they go on thyroid hormone replacement and they're like, oh, this is great. But then you're like, well, hold on. It may not be your greatest though, because you've mm -hmm. been feeling like shit for such, and then 
there comes a time where you, again, you said it so well, you mourn the loss of your previous self, who not only was once hopeless and worried and thought this was just them and this is your lot in life and oh, well, mm-hmm. is this ever going to get better? But it's like sad to look back and look at all the years and time that was spent being sick. Oh, and, yeah. and yeah, there's this moment of just like, it's not anyone's fault. We learned when we learned when we did, but like, oh man, and I... I have those days even, you know, sometimes I'll talk with the thyroid client and look, look, people are crying to me like they are with you because this stuff's very upsetting. And yeah. I never take the mercy for granted that I'm fixed, right? Or that I'm better. Right? I never take it for granted. I'm always reminded like a hundred percent, you know, I'll get to the top of a hill on a hike and I'll be like, I'll have a moment and go, I remember just barely being able to make it, I know. Hate it yeah. pulling over to the side, blood clots falling out of my butt, like just awful crying on hikes, like trying to push through scene. If I just, and I, I just, it, it never gets old. And I think that you would say this too, which is if you're out there and you're suffering with any kind of health thing, when you get to the other side of it, it'll be the best thing that ever happened to you because you will have a little of gr- level of gratitude for mm-hmm. your health and perspective that people don't have when they've never had a problem. Correct. And I look back and I mourn the lack of compassion I had for myself because yeah. of what society was telling me, what, what my own medical education, my own nursing education had told me that this was a me problem, not it, that it was motivation or it was laziness or it was depression or any of the things that people tried to pin my symptoms on. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember my partner, Jason, who's amazing, did not understand it because we didn't know what was going on. And I remember him being so frustrated. He's like, I just want to go for a walk. Let's go. And I'm like, I can't. He's like, that's bullshit. Stop being lazy. Get up. Right. And he was so frustrated right. with me. Um, and this was God, probably seven years ago. Um, and that lack of compassion we have for ourselves. I love the shared experience of liberating people from that judgment on themselves and giving them light at the end of the tunnel is the most beautiful thing. I'm sure you would say the same thing. Like that experience of being able to give someone light at the end of the tunnel is it's everything. It is what medicine for me is supposed to be not throwing pills at symptoms. There's a place for medication. There's absolutely a place for medication. I am not that guy, but we have to look at the body as a whole. We have to. Yeah. It was really important what you said about your partner, because, you know, as I wrote in my book and I've coached couples on this, because this is what happens, right? The, mm-hmm. and, and unfortunately, because it's disproportionately women, often it's the woman, not just yeah. like happened with the guy, but the guy's going like, you've been to a hundred fucking doctors. Like what's mm-hmm. the, because they're thinking, well, the medical union must have some answer. Like either you're a hypochondriac or they're like, mm-hmm. this is not the woman I married. This is not the woman mm-hmm. I dated. What happened to the life full of life person I met? And now you don't even want to go on a walk. And you feel bad about yourself. I had a friend later who called me up uh, crying once he realized what this was years later. And he said, Mm -hmm. I felt so bad. I thought you were such a party pooper. You didn't want to do anything. And now I feel so bad because Mm -hmm. now I realize it wasn't your fault. Yeah. It wasn't Mm -hmm. my fucking fault. On the other side of it too, though, because of what hypothyroidism does do to people's energy wherewithal, Mm -hmm. we also have to go. Yeah. (laughs) Mental health. We also, when we're better, then it's time to probably go explain some people and maybe a couple apologies are necessary because yeah. you didn't, you weren't who you were because you couldn't be and you didn't know. And now maybe you need to go, hey, sorry, I was short with you or sorry, I was this way or sorry, I was just, you know what I mean? You don't have a lot of wherewithal and you're not a real fun person to hang out with, you know, when something you're I have, Something I have to do professionally sometimes because, you know, nursing is one of those professions that like, if you aren't setting yourself on fire you're a wuss does that make like if you're not it's really interesting and so sometimes with my coworkers who will ask hey why do you take so many voluntary flex days because we're with we can use our pto for whatever we want and if the census is low on the floor um they may not need as many nurses that day and if you say hey i volunteer to stay home i'll use a vacation day um who does that harm no one people judge that but I only have limited energy. Um, as fixed, quote unquote, as I am, it's still a journey for me. I still have energy balance issues. And sometimes I have to be very transparent with my coworkers and be like, you well, know, because your just, job also is horrendous. Like the three days, is brutal. The how many, what are the On hour shifts? I mean, yeah, that's 12 and a half. Yeah, most nurses, half. yeah, most nurses are fucking have some issues with the hypothyroid right. or not. They have, yeah. But, but you sometimes I, I feel like the transparency helps because the judgment is so quick. 
And we're all guilty of the nursing. Nurses are pretty hard on each other. There's this phrase, nurses eat their young. And oh. we're, we're tough, man. And sometimes I be, have to be like, look, I, I need the rest. My body doesn't function the way that yours might. And if they want to judge that, that's on them. That has nothing to do with me. But I think it's important for people to realize that chronic illness is everywhere. It doesn't mean you're a non-functioning person. It doesn't mean that you don't have a high reliability job. Um, it's everywhere. <laughs> so it's- And also that's just that, a great testament to like, fuck everyone else's opinion and don't get peer pressure into shit, oh, yeah, particularly when you're it. over the age of 18, right? Yeah. <laughs> just, I know, right? You know, I am 43 years old. No one's going to tell yeah. me how to use my personal days, but anyway, That's right. yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I have to set boundaries with myself sometimes and be like, I don't have the energy for that. And I'm not going to allow myself to place judgment on myself for not getting, um, that huge hair washing and styling done at the end of the day that I had planned. Cause mm -hmm. I don't have any gas left in the tank. I'm out of spoons. I no longer place judgment on myself for those things. I have to say, Hey, what's going on with me? Am I extra stressed? Do I need more thyroid hormone? Do I eat like crap? You know, I have to just introspectively just ask myself and be curious about what's going on with myself as opposed to judgmental about what's going on with myself. And I try to teach my clients that. And it's so hard. People really want to judge themselves and it breaks my heart. It's their default. It seems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in, in sort of closing up as we wind down here, mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, anyone who, first of all, you understand thyroid, you understand paleo primal health, and you really understand keto. You understand keto on a level that I don't, which is why I don't coach keto because yeah. I don't, you know, you know, everything about testing blood, millimeters, millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone does, you know, it's not just thyroid that Jess can help you with. It's also keto or just getting your metabolic shit together. Even if you don't want to go full keto, she yeah. knows how to make all the adjustments. She knows all the nuances. And I really trust Jess on her, uh, on her coaching abilities and her, her knowledge. Tell us like, how can we benefit from you? What if we're like, you know what? I need help. I'm going to go keto or I've, I've got a thyroid problem and I need to get my shit together. <laughs> like, awesome. Um, you, my, my coaching company is called new terrain wellness, but you can find me on Instagram under keto underscore nurse underscore Jess. Um, new terrain wellness has different coaching packages. I have, um, it's called new terrain wellness, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Just just and you pulled um, off your tongue and it kind of melded together. I wanted to just <laughs> clarify I, those words. That has happened. Um, yeah. New terrain wellness. Cause we're on new terrain. You get a diagnosis. You don't know. You need a Sherpa. You need a guy That's a, no, yeah. going up this mountain. You need a Sherpa with a couple of oxygen tanks ready to go. <laughs> Seriously. Cause this is a mountain folks. Um, and I've walked the mountain. I've done it myself. Um, so I have different coaching packages. My, my most recommended one that I would tell people, if you're trying to make a serious change in your life, I have a three month coaching package and I only coach one to three people at a time because your experience is truly curated to you. There is no one size fits all in coaching. Um, like Elle said, we tailor to your specific needs and your reality and your body. We're all different. Um, I also, everyone gets a free consultation when you, you know, send me just an inquiry and I'll get on a zoom with you for like half an hour. We'll see what's going on with you. And if coaching's right for you. I have um, one-time coaching appointments that are 90 minutes. If you just want to be like, hey, how I'm, I'm pretty good. Everything's going okay, but I've got this stuff going on. Do you have any troubleshooting that you'd like to do? Um, and that's that's where you can find me. I love it. What um, As we wrap up, what would you like to leave our audience with on any of these topics or anything that comes to mind? I mean, we'll have to have you back on at some point because you know, we, we could go on for five hours. We could, so we could. much to say about this topic, but- <laughs> But what I am, but I am so glad I met you because you are another person on T3 only. And because of your experience and your knowledge and your, your degree, like it is important to have someone like you who also understands this because, you know, you're coming from a legit street cred background on it. And you can say, I wasn't taught it. None of these motherfuckers were taught it. That's why they're uninformed. You know, she's a perfect example of having to learn it herself, just like Dr. Forsman did. And he has yeah. told people, look, in my early years as a doctor, I probably fucked up people with the wrong thyroid stuff because we didn't know, <laughs> you know, what I know. I mean? the Thanks, difference buddy. between him and Jess and other people in the medical who are medical professionals is they actually go, well, no, 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 I, let me, let's look at this. Something's yeah. not right. Let me investigate further versus you know, no, no, no shade to your friend, but your friend is like, well, whatever, fine. I don't have the time. 
there's other people that's not, for that. That's not someone there's you other want. people for that is her answer because right, again, right. she's she's got her specialty. Um, I would say to folks, if you're if you feel on a gut level that something's not, not right in your body, um it doesn't have to be a catastrophic doom feeling, but you're like, this doesn't feel right. And a doctor's telling you nothing's wrong with you, um, don't give up. I would read the paleothyroid solution that Elle wrote because a lot of the sort of gray area things that especially women feel that they get gaslit about can be thyroid related. Um, I would try your best. And this is kind of gatekeeping because functional med doctors don't usually take insurance, but try to get yourself to an integrative or functional med physician or even a naturopathic doctor to do a little deeper dive. Um, And inflammation presents itself in a lot of different ways. So if your diet consists of a lot of processed food, a lot of carbohydrates, um, start, start thinking about just taking those processed foods out of your diet. And if you need more help, there is help. There are people like me. There are people like L there are people like Dr. Forsman who are trying to change it and we're here for you. I love it. Uh, Jess, thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone will put the show notes to connect with her, but new terrain wellness and um, reach out if you need some help. Thanks so much, Jess. And for everyone else, we'll see you next week. Hey listeners, you know, over the years, a ton of companies have approached me to collaborate, but I will only promote companies whose products I believe in and that I actually use and consume on a regular basis. So let me tell you about some of my favorite companies that I can offer you discounts for. Rep Provisions, an amazing company doing incredible things for our planet, topsoil, and animals with regenerative agriculture. And it's my number one source for quality pasture-raised meat and chicken. Visit repprovisions.com and use code L15 for 15% off. I'm also obsessed with a company called Carnivore Crisps. They make a lean, all-natural, and delicious alternative to conventional snacking made with just real meat and real salt. Totally addictive, and my favorite ones are the beef brisket and the ribeye. Visit carnivorecrisps.com and use code PALEO10 for 10% off. I also love and regularly use Paleo Valley products. They make amazing supplements and delicious paleo products. I use the superfood greens powder, grass-fed beef sticks, the organ complex, and their bone broth bars. I love the lemon and apple. I also use their essential sea complex and more. Visit paleovalley.com forward slash promos forward slash L Russ for 15% off. I also love Primal Kitchen. They make delicious paleo-approved, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and no refined sugar products. And I use them daily, from their collagen powders and sauces and marinades to their avocado and olive oil. So good, so healthy. Visit PrimalKitchen.com and use code L10 for 10% off. I also love paleo powder and use it almost on everything I cook. They make incredible seasoning blends and they also have these incredible grain-free coatings that feel just like crispy breadings that you would have had prior to knowing that there's another way. So visit paleopowder.com and use code L15 for 15% off.